When somebody says, can I speak to your manager, sometimes you have to give them some malicious compliance. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, you don't want to follow the engineer's sealed drawing? Fine by me. Please sign here. I worked for an aluminum awning company, worked in the warehouse for eight years and learned the machines, and then moved into sales for the past ten and a half years. For the longest time, all we required from our customers to quote them was the size of the canopy they needed, if it needed any minimum wind or weight loads for being close to the coast or for being inland, and whether they were going to pull a permit for the job or not. If they needed a permit, we got an out-of-house engineering firm to do a stamped or sealed drawing, and then we'd adjust the material list so that our customer could build the awning according to the drawing. One of my long-term customers recently was purchased by two brothers that wanted to try something new. They had worked successfully in the tech sector, created some app, became wealthy, and decided to buy an aluminum awning company from the owner who was set to retire. At first, they were alright to deal with. They were crap heads, they had to be cc'd on every email to and from their own sales force, and would call to yell at me if I didn't cc back. They asked the same questions 200 times for each job and would tell me, we are your boss, we pay your bills. Really, major crap holes. And my company considered not selling to them due to the time and effort each individual job required to get through. Now, we get to where they make the mistake that cost them around $100,000. This awning company did not do residential work at all, but instead did larger commercial jobs. Think of the overhead awnings you'll see over FedEx or UPS bay doors or commercial buildings with window awnings or break area awnings, covered walkways at schools and churches. One of these churches contacted the brothers for a series of walkways that were going to be nearly 2,000 lineal feet. Massive job. These were going over sidewalks, between buildings, creating a new drop-off area for the school portion, and smaller awnings for where teachers or parents would sit at the playground. The church wanted it done above board and told my customer, we need a permit for all of this. So that's what they did. They gave me the information, I got the engineer, they worked out the details, got a price, paid it, and within three weeks we had a set of drawings. These drawings included 6 inch by 6 inch extruded aluminum posts, as the awnings were going to be 14 plus feet in the air at some points. These are $700 plus posts depending on color and paint. My customer did not like that. Brother P says, OP, hey, about that church job. I need you to switch all the 6 inch by 6 inch posts to 4 inches by 4 inches. We're going to save the church some money and we have an engineer that vouches for the 4 inch posts. I say, do you have a stamp or a seal for this engineer? I need to quote it according to the drawing. But if you have another one where it was chain, Brother P says, just switch it over, OP. We'll handle it. Cue malicious compliance. They'd been annoying and hounding me for this job and many others. So I switched 56 24-foot 6x6 posts to 4x4. I sent the quote back with the extra line on it stating, material changed from engineer's drawing per customer request, printed out the email, and took it to my boss to check off. She asked me the usual questions and informed me that if we sent this job out, we would not accept any returns since it was a customer's request to change from sealed drawings. I let my customer know all this, they approved, and two weeks later, the material shipped. Now, little did my customer know, but the head of that county's permitting office was a member of that church, saw the construction going on over the weekend, and when he finally went back to his office, asked around for the permit for his address. He found it with the attached drawings used to get the permit, and took all of that to the job site. From my understanding, this man went out and measured every single post, spacing, and found that my customer wasn't doing anything to the engineer's drawing. The last I heard, he made them take everything down, refill the holes for the posts they drilled in the wrong places, and basically made them start over. I have never smiled as hard as I did when Brother P called me, asking to return the posts and switch out for the 6x6. Unfortunately for him, we don't take back material that's been cut, installed, or has screw holes, and that he signed the quote stating the changes per his request. It took them another month to finish the job, and I only wish I knew if they broke even or not. 
I think what's more than likely is they didn't try to save the church any money. They probably billed for the quoted 6 inches and then switched to 4 to save themselves some money and make more money off the whole deal. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is no more overtime, no more services on the customer's yard. Now I drive around most of the day. I'm a diesel mechanic that works for one of the largest two fleets in the United States. My job is to work off-site for a single customer which is one of the largest middlemen of the product they ship in the US. I can't say much more about the product because it would give away exactly who they are and this isn't a throwaway account. Anyway, my job is to load up my truck at the shop with parts and oil, travel to the customer's site take inventory of the units on their yard, compare the list to overdue and coming due services, work on the customer write-up list, work on our internal company campaign list, send an email and internal memo about any truck I work on and receive info about, pay attention to the internal group text, keep up on my training online, do repairs on site, and look at drive-ups as they come in. I have to keep track of everything. It took some getting used to, but I'm decent at it now. In the state I work in, the law states that during our required 30 minute meal period, we are to be paid if we remain on the clock or have anything work related to do during the mall period. My first few days I clocked out for lunch, but was immediately interrupted by a drive up. Our timekeeping program has no allowances or adjustments to state that I had to work on my meal period. I don't mind working when I'm trying to eat, so I simply don't clock out for lunch, as I tend to nibble throughout the day anyway. The customer likes that I'm always available, and I get 30 minutes overtime every day. With the days I work, I get 2 hours overtime every week. If I work a day extra, I get a lot more. The customer's happy, which makes my boss happy, which gets me more money and makes me happy. Win win win. Last week, I was notified by my company that we're now on zero minute overtime and we must take our lunches and breaks. No problem, I'm pretty compliant because my boss is cool. I was also told that we can no longer do any repairs or services on site. They have to be done at the shop. Again, no problem, I don't really care where they want them done. Any overtime has to be pre-approved by my boss's boss's boss. I've worked with him in the past and he's also pretty cool, but he's very busy and rarely responds right away. Here's the malicious compliance part. I now come back to the shop for my breaks and lunch near the end of the day because I'm not interrupted here. That's an hour not at the customer's yard. I also have to come back here to do services, so I'm rarely at the customer's yard now. As any overtime requests go mostly unnoticed, I don't do any more overtime. I get drive ups during the day and I have to tell the drivers to contact corporate as I have to adhere to these new rules or I'll be fired. The broken down tractors and trailers are piling up in the customer's yard because I'm barely there and they're piling up in the shop yard because I now spend most of my time driving back and forth and the other staff count at the shop hasn't increased. No overtime, more driving in circles, much less actual work. As long as you're not getting bored out of your mind. I'd say hey, take the easier workload. Seems to me like a good time to find some nice podcasts or something. Our next story is mandatory half day PTO. I've been with my company for 10 years. During that time I've been hourly, then salaried, then back to hourly, and I've been salaried for the past few years. Hourly employees earn PTO each pay period. And if you work less than 40 hours a week, use any PTO to offset certain days to get you up to 40 hours per week. As a salaried worker, if you work 5 plus hours a day and you leave early or come in late, you don't necessarily use PTO because you're expected to get a full day of work in. I've always worked 40 hours a week and if I need to stay late or come in early, I'll make sure I adhere to 40 hours as closely as possible. I'm usually the first person in for the day to get the day started and make sure if someone calls out, I can cover for them with little issue. If someone else has to leave, I'll stay late to make sure everything's handled, but I absolutely believe that time off work is yours. I won't call you if you're off. I'll see you when you get back. Well, the company implemented a new policy effective January 1st, half-day PTO. 
They sell it to us that we salaried employees need to take off. We can now only use half a day now rather than a full day. But it also means if you're going to be late or leave early, you're using PTO. Salaried employees were pissed. Many of us work like 60 to 80 hours a week. Some offset time to make up for longer days, 10 to 16 hour shifts. So if I work less than 8 but 16 another day, I have to use PTO on one day and too bad so sad the day I overwork? They say yep, no more offsetting time. Doctor's appointment and you're gonna come in an hour late? Half day of PTO. Need to leave 45 minutes early to get your kid to sports practice? Half day of PTO. Car problems? Half day of PTO. I bet. Last week I had some car troubles and needed to get it to a mechanic first thing in the morning. I could have been into work with only missing an hour. Maybe two. Not anymore. I'll see you at 1pm. I had an amazing morning and I'm not stressed one bit. I even went back home and cleaned up some to surprise my wife when she came home later. This week I had a sick kid. Normally I'd beg a grandparent to watch them while I went to work. Nah. I took the morning shift, wife watched our kid in the afternoon. I'm a little bummed I'm going to potentially use so much more PTO, but if I'm forced to use it, I'm going to comply and maximize its full potential and only work for a full 4 hours instead. Gonna enjoy full mornings and sleep in, or full afternoons and enjoy some time to myself if my kid's in school. Heck, next time I may as well book a massage just for the heck of it. Productivity and free coverage have ended at this location, and I know many departments are suffering with workforce shortages. Good for them. This is definitely great if you earned or have enough PTO banked to do this. A lot of people are just really screwed and they have no recourse. Our next story is, can I speak to your manager? A few years ago, I worked as a cashier at a fast food restaurant. I don't eat fast food, so I don't know how it is with other places. But with this establishment, nothing was free. You want sauce with your tacos? That's 50 cents, please. Substitute your sour cream with guacamole? Sorry, you have to pay for that. You want ranch with your salad? That'll be extra. All of these prices were very prominently displayed on a giant menu in the middle of the lobby, by the way. Now, I was paid minimum wage. I, nor any of the other cashiers, could not give a darn about all that. It also made the prices ridiculous, as a lot of customers naturally wanted add-ons. So usually we wouldn't charge for most of those things, but we could only get away with that when our manager was not in the front, as she was the strict type, yell at you in front of the customers for giving away a free sauce type. On a slow day, an older woman walked in and ordered a salad. By the time it got to the register, she'd loaded it with a bunch of extras. To be completely honest, there was no rhyme or reason for what I chose to charge people for, it really depended on my mood. Her salad was pretty accessorized, so I felt like I had a charge for something, but I was having a good day so I just rang her up for the salad and extra guacamole and that's all. It was something like $12.50. She immediately started to complain about the price. I explained to her that it was $11.50 for the salad and a dollar for the guac. That's ridiculous, it shouldn't cost that much just for a salad. Even $11 is way too much. I said I'm sorry ma'am, but that's the price that's on the menu. She said why did you raise the price so high? A salad should not cost that much. I tried to explain that I was only a cashier and did not in fact control the menus, but she would have none of it and only grew increasingly rude. Then she dropped the classic dreaded line, Can I speak to your manager? I hesitated, looked her in the eye and said, You don't want to do that. She said, No, get your manager right now. So I went to the back and told my manager that there was a customer who wanted to speak with her. She came to the register with me, looked at the salad, looked at what I rang up, and immediately started going off about how I didn't add the salsa, the chips, the house dressing. I was used to this, so I just stood there and stared at the customer as my manager screamed at me. The customer stared back, dumbfounded as my manager took over the register, corrected the order, and left without acknowledging her at all. The salad came out to be around $16.50. The woman paid and left without another word. 
I'm just impressed that somebody who's willing to go at bat and have a fit over the price and say, get me your manager, even after witnessing that display and that dressing down of OP, would just silently go ahead and pay an even more expensive fee and take it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.